الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي كان موجودا قبل حدوث الأشياء ويبقى بعد فناء الأشياء تفرد بالأولية والقدم ووسم كل شيء ما عداه بالفناء والعدم كما قال الزشان كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه وكل نفس ذائقة الموت وقال كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام سبحان من لا يخفى عليه اختلاف النيات ولا يعزب عنه معاص العباد في الخلوات سبحان الله الذي منه خلقة العباد وإليه المعاد فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو الملك الذي لا ينازع في ملكه ولا يضاد في حكمه يعذب من يشاء بما يشاء كيف يشاء ويرحم من يشاء بما يشاء كيف يشاء تعذيبه المسيين عدل وأفه تفضل ونشهد أن محمدا سيد المرسلين وخير المبشرين والمنذرين صلى الله عليه وآله الهداة المهديين من ركب سفينتهم نجا واهتدى ومن تخلف عنها ظلا فغرقا وهوى أوسيكم عباد الله بالعتسام بالتقوى فإنه حبل متين وأروة وثقا فقد قال علي بن عبي طالب نزلت أنفسهم منهم في البلاء كالتي نزلت في الرخاء ولولا الأجل الذي كتب الله عليهم لم تستقر أرواحهم في أجسادهم طرفة عين شوقا إلى الثواب وخوفا من العقاب صلوات بيجي محمد وعلي محمد Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Continuing with the khutbah of muttaqeen by Amir al-Mu'mineen in Nahj al-Balagha, khutbah number 193 We reached the segment uh, in the previous Friday khutbah where we talked about the type of ilm that according to the sight of Islam and the sight of Amir al-Mu'mineen uh, is something which is ilm nafih, which is a beneficial knowledge here in this segment, Imam is talking about another attribute of muttaqeen. As you know, that these have been the attributes Imam, Imam has been discussing in regards to those who are referred to as the pious. He says the sixth attribute of these muttaqeen, or those who are pious, is that nuzzilat anfusuhum minhum fil bala'i kallati nuzzilat fil rakha'i. He says they remain in the time of trials as though they remain in the time of comfort. What is Imam trying to tell us over here? That muttaqeen are the people that regardless of what type of situation they might be in, whether it's the time for trial for them or it's the time for comfort for them, their state is one and the same. It does not change from one time to another. If they're in distress, you will find them on the same path. If they are living in comfort, you will find them on the same steadfastness as they were when they were in the time of trials. So the sixth attribute of muttaqeen which Imam describes is the condition of these people which remains unchanged in times of trials and, and, and comfort. We see, in other words, that the time of adversity and privilege are same for these individuals. And it's very difficult for us to figure that out or to be able to imagine such a thing that every single one of us have gone through situations when we're living in the time of comfort. There's really no pressure on our minds from any, uh, from any aspect. But then there comes time that we are faced with different challenges, whether they're financial challenges, whether they're social challenges, or the family-related challenges that all of us go through, and definitely it affects our mind, and it affects our intellect, it affects the way we think, and we deal with other individuals. Right away, if you see someone a little bit under, uh, you know, in the financial crisis, right away you'll see the way, the mode of talking, and the mode of uh, uh, mingling with the people will change for this individual. If you see there's some sort of uh, social or family problem with this individual, right away you will find a little bit different attitude 
from this person as is supposed to be in the other occasions. But Imam, what he's trying to say over here that in, the, in other words, the adversity and privileges are same for these who are known as muttaqeen. It's not like that they show emotion. <clears throat> it's not like that they don't show emotions. Definitely, as insan, you will be showing emotions, whether you are going through adversity or you're not going through adversity, you will be showing some sort of emotions. But that's not to negate the fact that you're still remaining calm. You're still believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever falls upon you, it is from Him. And it, obviously, it is going to be a matter of trial that you will have to go through. And to support this argument, we see the examples of Ma'asumin. And I think I've quoted this hadith here before as well, but there's nothing wrong in repeating it, that um, Masum says, Inna bala that this bala or the, the problems or the calamities that fall, it falls upon every individual. It may, it may fall on a zalim, an oppressor, it might fall on the mu'min, it might fall on anbiya, and it also falls upon the awliya. But... There are different ways of looking at each, of the, each one of these single bala or these uh, calamities. When it falls upon a zalim, inna al-bala lizalim adabun. When it falls upon a zalim or an oppressor, it is there to teach him a lesson. That look, you were trying to oppress people and now through this calamity that falls upon you, you will take heed and you will learn a lesson. But the same bala when it comes upon a mu'min, it says inna al-bala lil mu'min imtihanun. Mu'min hasn't really done anything bad. So why is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending down this calamity upon him? To test him, to go make him make sure that he goes through this imtihan and how he comes out successful from this imtihan. So show, to show that you know, he's same, whether in the situation of adversity, whether in the situation of comfort. We see the bala also falls upon the anbiya. Inna al-bala lil anbiya but what happens when it comes on Anbiya? Darajatun. It shows the different darajat and the different levels of the Anbiya. So it's not that Anbiya, there's anything to be proven through the Anbiya. No, Anbiya have already proven themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What goes on when they face some sort of calamities is how they react to it and it increases their darajat. And that's why you see all the Anbiya are not equal. Some of them have higher statuses. Some of them have lower statuses. Some Anbiya reached far up, up to the extent that they were known as ulul azm some of them just remain anbiya some of them became rusul as well so these are the different areas where we see the darajat of anbiya as well so this calamity is for basically everyone so it's not like they don't show emotions rather it means that they remain calm they don't show panic whatever befalls they remain content because it is coming from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this sentence could have few co possible commentaries. One way of looking at it is that the, from the perspective of being in total submission and not complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you are in total submission to whatever has happened to you, you will not be complaining uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it come upon you. In this regard, we see the majority of the people are not like that. Usually when one is severely ill, only then they turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but heedless when they are healthy. And that's what reminds us of the sentence from our fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salatu wa salam, who says that, oh Allah, I don't know when to thank you more, when I'm sick or when I'm healthy. And he says, rather, I should thank you when I'm unhealthy, when I'm sick, because when I'm unhealthy, then I really understand the worth of the help that you have given to me. He says, so I don't know when to thank you more. Usually people thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they're healthy. But Imam is saying, I'm going to thank you more when I'm unhealthy. Because it is only when I'm unhealthy I understand the worth of the health that you have given to me. We see that a lot of people, even mushrikeen, kuffar, in the situations when you know, they, there's some sort of calamity falls upon them, right away they will turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but not just turn in a normal sense. They will be sincere, mukhlisin, when they turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether these people be mushrikeen or kuffar. Quran says in Surah An-Kabut, verse number 65, That these people, when they sail in a boat, they sincerely pray to God with pure faith. Faith. They had pure faith when they were sincerely praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we bring them safely to land, 
they start considering things equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they return back to their old habits. Before that, when they were about to, you know, get, uh, be drowned right away, they're referring towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're making these, uh, you know, with khulus, with sincerity, they're making this dua and referring towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as soon as we have brought them to najat, we have given them salvation, we have protected them from being drowned, right away they turn back to their old habits. Here God points out that even mushrikeen turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of distress. In reality, this is a manifestation of tawheed e fitri That's where we understand this, this tawheed, belief in oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or believing in one source which can help you in any situation, it is tawheed e fitri Because it's in the fitrat of every individual, whether this person is a mushrik, whether this person is a kafir, whether this person is a mu'min or a muslim, this tawheed exists in every single person. And that's why you see even the the kuffar are referring towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, it is instinctive. This is something which is in the fitrat of insan. Why we see in Surah Rum, it says, Fitrat Allah allati fataran nasa alayha. Adhere to the true nature on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created human beings. But the wrong customs and cultures, incorrect tabiyat or tarbiyat as well, erroneous advices and ill information are those veils of heedlessness that become obstacle in illuminating this light of tawheed in insan. All of these curtains, all of these veils become the reason that insan does not come out of this tawheed and think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that fashion. That's why Rasulullah said, قَالَ النَّبِي كُلَّ مَوْلُودٍ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ حَتَّى يَكُونَ أَبَوَاهُ يُحَوِّدَانِهِ وَيُنَسِّرَانِهِ He said, every child is born on the true nature. It is up to the parents who turn him into a Jew or a Christian through their negative tarbiyat, or if they want, they can turn him into a Muslim and a Mu'min through their correct tarbiyat. The next thing that Imam mentions as far as the attribute of muttaqin is concerned, Imam says, وَلَوْلَ الْأَجَلُ الَّذِي كَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ If it was not for the, if it had not been fixed periods of life for these individuals, these muttaqin ordained for each individual, their spirits would not have remained in their bodies even for a twinkling of an eye because of their eagerness towards the reward and fear of chastisement. We see muttaqin do not have this status that we can perceive even. Imam is saying that their arwah are willing to leave this body which seems like it's sort of a, in a prison of this body. If it was not for the time that is written upon them, it will fly away, it will leave this body as soon as it could because of the eagerness of the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fear of the chastisement. Another place, you know, this hadith is explained by Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib wasalam. In regards to awliya Allah, Imam says, Qala, inna awliya Allah sakatu fakana sukutuhum dhikra wa nazaru fakana nazaruhum ibra wa nataku fakana nutquhum hikma wa mashaw fakana mashyuhum bayna al-nasi baraka lawla al-ajal allati kutibat alayhim lam taqirra arwaquhum fi ajsadihim khawfan min al-adab wa shawqan ila al-thawab the same thing that imam is mentioning over here he says friends of allah or the awliya allah if you want to call them are the ones, if they are silent, their silence is considered to be the zikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah. If they look upon something, if they see something, their sight is considered to be a lesson and ibrat and the example for others. If they talk, their speech is considered to be wisdom. If they walk, their walking among the people is considered to be barakat and the blessing. If it wasn't for the death that has been written for all of them, their souls will not stay in their bodies for a moment from the fear of the torment and inclination towards the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see the awliyaullah, the muttaqeen that, he, that are being discussed over here. Sukut, silence becomes the zikr and the remembrance of Allah. Their nazar becomes the ibrat and the lesson for people. Their nutq, their speech becomes the wisdom for individuals. Mashihum, their walking also becomes barakah for those who are in the surrounding. In order for us to comprehend the meaning of this sentence, we must first understand a few terminologies that Imam is using, or rather the hadith that I had mentioned before that Imam is using over here, the word ajal that Imam uses is in the meaning of a specified time. 
time. Qaza ul ajl, I'm sure you've heard, means completion of a time period. When death approaches, it is also referred to as ajl. We say ajl of the person has reached, therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or therefore that person is dead. Because of their ajl. So ajl is the specified time because it is the end of a person's life. Quranic verses and ahadith prove that the fact that there is ajal for everyone and there's word, these words of Amir al-Mu'mineen also point toward that. Quran also mentions that this ajal is not just for the individuals, but this ajal could also fall upon a whole nation where we say in Surah Araf, verse number 34, Wale ummatin ajalun. It says, and for every nation, there's a specified term, there's specified time, and there will be ajal for every single nation. Forget about the people, but even for the nations, there will be ajal. The main reason for their death of a nation is probably their deviation from the truth, reality, justice, and imposing oppression, and indulging deeply into desires, being drowned in the wave of vanity and show off. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the examples in different surahs, surah Fajr, mentions the examples of the greatest of the powers of their time, qawm ad qawm Samud, qawm Fir'aun. But what happened to them? Allah gives example of these strong nations who are way far ahead of their own time, uh, on, the, uh, on their own times because of the advancement that they had done and they were strong with the things that they had created at that time. But because they deviated from the path, because they did not take care of the justice, they did not take care of reality and the truth, they fell into oppression. Right away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed those powerful nations. When we study the previous nations, we find such examples are in front of us. Point worth noticing in the above verse is that Allah said, there's no delay, nor can they hasten it. You know, the ayat that I had recited from Surah Araf, uh, 34, it said, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ عَجَلٌ فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَاخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَخْدِمُونَ For every nation, there's a specified time. So when their time has come, they will not remain behind an hour, nor will they precede it. It will be that specified time that Allah SWT has mentioned for them. So we see that Islam orders us, if we get sick, to go after the cure. You know, this does not mean if a person says, well, there's a specified time for every individual, then why should I even refer to a doctor? Some uh, factors then start, you know, coming out with such um, notions and try and lead people towards uh, the other side. It says, you know, it's worth mentioning over here that there's no delay, nor they can hasten it. So people might ask this question. You say, well, you know, if this is what Islam is ordering, then if I get sick, then why is there a need to go see a doctor? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written a specified time, and if everything is predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I should just remain in this way. So Islam orders us, if we get sick, to go after its cure through a doctor and medicine, even if the doctor is kafir. You don't have to worry about the religion of the doctor that, you know, there's a Muslim or non-Muslim mu'min or whatnot. No, go after it. When you see that even Amir al-Mu'mineen, when he was struck by the sword, Lord, we, a Christian physician was brought to see Imam Ali. And the examples are all around. Second, we see Islam also orders us to maintain good health and take care of our diet. It doesn't mean because there's a specified time for every individual, you just let loose and the way your body and your physical health is going, you just let loose and let it be the way it wants to be. If there's a fear of life in certain area, don't go there. You know, don't put yourself into tahluka. Don't put yourself into halaka. It's rather, stay away from it. Don't raise the argument argument over here that if there's a specified time for me, then I'm going to go ahead and embrace all the challenges that there might be. Even if path of hajj is troublesome and you fear for your life, then this wajib also becomes, this wajib is no longer wajib upon you. It's socket upon you. It will not be, it will not remain wajib. Its obligation will not become taklif until the path is safe again for you. Sila rahm and giving sadaqah to prevent the mishaps and happening. And we see, yes, there is ajal for every individual. And I don't think if I'll have the time to go through the explanation of it, inshallah, next week, if Allah gives us the permission to recite that we need to understand the fact that, yeah, there is ajal and there is time for every single individual. But that does not mean that you cannot delay that time. That does not mean that that time cannot proceed back. Yes, you don't have it in your hand, but there are certain things that can delay the process. The example is very uh, common that, that I'm sure you've heard the examples of such things, that there was a person 
the Prophet saw he was not even a Muslim. He was going to work. Prophet said that this person will die today. This person goes to, he, he used to go to the jungle, you know, he cut the woods. And when he came back, he was still alive. Prophet was standing with the companions and the companion says, why is this person still alive? You said he, he was going to die today. His ajal had reached. Prophet right away asked, you know, let me see your woods. And as soon as he flipped through the woods, he saw there was a scorpion that was stuck to a wood. Prophet said the scorpion was supposed to bite you. And with the bite, you were supposed to die. What did you do when you went on your way? He said, I had two pieces of bread. On my way, I ran into a poor person. He asked for some help. I gave him one piece and I kept, kept one for myself. Allah, the Prophet said, because of this act of your generosity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delayed your life for 30 more years. The same way it is explained that when our sixth Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq wasalam, he, there's a hadith from him in which he talks about you know, some of the rights of the father. And he saw a, a son putting his hand onto father's shoulder and walking in front of the father with disrespect. And he was actually walking ahead of the father afterwards. Imam stopped him, and Imam recited this hadith. He says, you know, there are certain rights of the father. Among the rights is that you do not walk in front of your father. And that is considered to be with disrespect. You do not walk in front of your father. And after that, Imam said, three steps you took in front of your father decreased 30 years from your life. So sometimes these intangible things that we do, we do not realize sadaqah definitely increase the lifespan. And then sort of things that I explained just today, or this example by our sixth imam, can also decrease the lifetime of an individual. Let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq, to be able to follow the teachings of Masumin alayhi salatu wa salam. Whenever our ajal is written, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sure that when we leave this world, we are completely in faith and we do not deviate from the path of the faith. In the Hassan al-Hadith wa ablagh al-Mu'idha kitab Allah, a'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asri inna l-insana lafi khusr. Illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu s-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haqq wa tawasaw bil-sabr.